Tom Hardy is going to be Frankenstein. Tom Hardy. What the fuck is going on in Hollywood right now? They keep on cranking out these universal monster reboots and they just keep getting L's. It's so fucking sad because come on, this is, this is our heart you're messing with. But no more, okay? The video creep is here to fucking save you. I'm here to be your, your fucking Superman. Or who knows, maybe I'm here to fucking make new enemies. Regardless, I've decided to take matters into my own hands and cast the universal monsters in my own image. No, that's not right, because then that would mean that I'm just playing every character. That's not what I'm doing here. But yeah, on this episode of Video Creep, we're going to be recasting the universal monsters. So sit right there so that way we can see if you agree or if you think I'm a fucking shithead. Fucking Tom Hardy?! First up, we have The Invisible Man. Now, I'm a big fan of this movie, the original and its sequels, and I even really liked the movie Hollow Man. In fact, Hollow Man was one of those movies that like legitimately creeped me out at the time. Especially that scene where he's like sucking titty, or at least I think he's sucking titty. It's been a while since I've seen that movie, but I remember titty. But I will say that if I did have to recast this movie, I would want to go at the route of the original with the guy who's wrapped up, trying to figure out a cure to how he can actually be a visible man. And when I think about that movie, and I think about it in reference to everyone else in this list, I think it's the most comedic of the movies. I look at The Invisible Man like a dark comedy, if you will. And when I think about a dark comedy and I want to put somebody into that role, the person that comes to my mind is Jim Carrey. We absolutely know that he has the physicality to pull off something like The Invisible Man, especially if for a majority of the movie he's going to be wrapped up. We're going to depend on that physicality to pull the movie through. And when he gets serious, the world goes quiet. So I would personally love to see Jim Carrey's adaptation of The Invisible Man. Can anyone get tired of Jim Carrey? Up next is The Mummy. And this is another movie that, like, I really liked the original franchise, and then I went on to like the Mummy films with Brendan Fraser and shit. It's all been good for me. Except for the most recent one. But if we're gonna strip this thing right down to the bone, and you're gonna give me a Mummy character that's gonna terrify me, that's gonna give me something that I haven't already seen, and it's gonna play in today's audience, and this is going to surprise a lot of you, not only because I am switching up the gender, I don't want a male to play the mummy, I think this is a perfect role for a woman to come in, and I'm going to botch her name. But I think the perfect person for this role would be Lapita Naganyo? You might recognize her from the movie Us. And there was something about her acting in that movie, the way that she moved her body, it was just very chilling. It made me want to see her in more horror going forward. In addition to that, there's just something about her frame and her body itself. I think that that body wrapped up like a mummy, using prosthetics and her acting and what she can bring to the table, I think she would make for a very convincing mummy. Agree or disagree? That's what I think would be really fucking cool. The Phantom of the Opera. Now, diving into Phantom of the Opera for whatever reason, this was a very easy choice for me to make. And I don't know what it was, it just came to me right away. Some of the other people on this list, it kind of took me a little bit. I had to do some sussing out. But as soon as I thought Phantom of the Opera and I tried to put somebody in that role, the person that came to mind right away and I could never shake him was the one and only Hakeem Phoenix. There's just something about that dude. He just brings this intensity to every single role that he does. That when I take him as an actor and I peanut butter and share that with Phantom of the Opera, I love the idea of him being this guy who lives in the shadows, who's like kidnapping his love and playing the organ and shit. I think he would make for a very convincing Phantom of the Opera. However, I would like to take it in a step towards something that we haven't done before. 
or at least not something that I've seen already. Hawking Phoenix would have to be the absolute star of this movie. This would have to be the Phantom's story. The guy slays every single role that we give him. And I don't feel like we've ever seen this movie from that perspective. I think that would make it a fresh movie. I think it would take it out of being kind of a chick flick because it is. And I think it would give us something really interesting to hold on to. I want to sympathize with the Phantom in a way that I've never sympathized with him before. Wolfman! Now this was the exact opposite from Phantom of the Opera. Phantom of the Opera, that one clicked right away. This one, I went through like a couple different versions of different people that I tried to put in that role. First and foremost, just because I think my brain tries to shoehorn him into everything, because I just love him as an actor, I especially love him in horror films, I thought Elijah would. But the more I thought about that, it was just like, man, I fucking, I love him, but I don't see him as a wolf let alone the Wolfman character. I do think that we would be able to sympathize with him as a human, but I don't see how he would play as a wolf. And that is a problem when you're portraying the Wolfman. There's a certain duality that you have to enjoy about this character to sympathize with him in both states. So I'm sitting around, I'm thinking, who else? And for whatever reason, I'm thinking just like these guys with like smaller stature. So I was like, hmm, who's a little bit more wolf-like? Who can I see turning into a wolf? And then for whatever reason, my brain thought of Charlie Day. Now again, I think that this is a bias because I love It's Always Sunny in Philadelphia. And while yes, he is an endearing actor and there are things about him that I see would make for an interesting Wolfman, again, just that peanut butter and share, I don't see it. And then I went smaller. And now this is where I start to get really excited about the Wolfman. And a lot of you might not agree with me, but I don't know, it's all up here, man, I can see it. I think the perfect Wolfman and a perfect retelling of this story for today's day and age would be if we gave the role to Peter Dinklage. He is a phenomenal actor and what he brings to his characters is invaluable. I just fuck it. I love him. He's so smart and witty and you empathize with him right away. And that's what I want to see in the Wolfman. I love the idea of him struggling with being a little person in the real world. And then on the fucking full moon, he turns into this full-size ferocious wolf. That's just fucking shit up. Also, how adorable would it be to see little naked Peter Dinklage in the forest? This is a movie that I would probably go out to the theater to see, just because it is cunning, it is brave in a new way that we have not seen. And if you're bringing back these monsters, you're never gonna do better than what we already did, so reinvent them in an interesting way. I think if Peter Dinklage was our Wolfman, that would be interesting. Now we're gonna do Creature of the Black Lagoon, and I have to be completely honest with you guys, this is one that I definitely struggled with. So I will not be upset if you go in the comments and call me a total fucking idiot for botching this. I've never actually seen the movie for me to make this call. What I do know about Creature from the Black Lagoon is heavily based on pop culture. I've had enough exposure to him where I know what he is, I know his whole bag, but I've never sat down and watched the film to really emotionally get where this character comes from. So I can't emotionally pick a person to cast for that role. So I used logic. And logically, when I think about a character actor, I think about Andy Serkis. Which is interesting, because I wanted Andy Serkis to be Frankenstein for a little bit, but as I thought about it, I thought of someone a little bit better who I think I would love to see as Frankenstein. So why not give Andy Serkis this opportunity to, uh, terrorize the lagoon. Again, if I'm way off base with that, please let me know in the comments what you think would be a better person to portray the creature from the Black Lagoon. Hey guys, so I am editing this and I realized that I did not record my Dracula part. And uh, I can't leave him off this list, you know? He seems so crucial. So I'm just gonna spitfire a very quick who I think should be Dracula on my phone. And I'm just gonna cut it in, so I'm fucking sorry. I wish that I'd, well, I fucking wish I didn't do this. So initially, my first thought for Dracula, just because I, I like his style, I think it would lend well, really, really good, would be Alan Rickman. However, Alan Rickman is very dead, so I don't think he's up for the task. So as I think about who can do it, who's like modern, who's who's fucking doing it, who's got that that pizzazz, I was thinking about Adam Driver, and like. 
I think he has the chops to do it. He's young, he's youthful, he's a very powerful actor. I would like to see him portray Dracula. Now that could go either way, that could be really, really bad, or it could be really fucking good. But I'm gonna err on the side that it's fucking good. So, Adam Driver, don't let me down. The Bride of Frankenstein. Now, I had to include her. You can naysay if you want, but I'm not gonna do Frankenstein without including his bride as well. They're a package deal, they're married. And funny enough, I had quite a few selections for the Bride of Frankenstein, like, right away. I'm gonna get the weird and funny one right out of the way, because for whatever reason, immediately I thought of Aubrey Plaza, and, like, I, I get it, that's kind of a weird fucking choice, but, like, here, I made this mock-up just to show you where my head was at. Huh? A little bit, right? Unfortunately, I think that she does not have the charisma that you need out of the Bride of Frankenstein. So we scratched that right away. And I think like the logical thing to go to when looking for the Bride of Frankenstein, it's almost too perfect, so much so that I thought it was too perfect and she's not my select. But I wanted to bring her up anyway. And that person is Helena Bonham Carter. It's almost like once you think of her in that role, it's hard not to think of her in that role. The problem that I have with that is I think that she's just a little bit too sinister. I can imagine her playing that role masterfully, but I think that she would lack a certain elegance that the bride has in my eyes. So I scratch Helena out for now, though I do think that she would make a very convincing bride of Frankenstein. Ultimately, and it took some careful consideration, because I'm looking for a certain elegance while I'm looking for a certain fear and stillness. And I ended up with Michelle Williams. There's just something about this actress. Every time that I see her, I have this subtle fear. She's very strong in her solidarity. And I think that makes her a very powerful character. So I would love to see her done up in that wig and in that gown. And I think she would knock it out of the park. And last but not least, we got my boy, this hidden Frankenstein. Now this is my favorite of the Universal Monsters. Oh gee, thanks Mike. And I'm not gonna lie, I went through quite a few different renditions of this Frankenstein for me. Ultimately, I ended up settling on Michael Rooker. There's just something about that guy. He is intimidating. He is big. I would like to see him as Frankenstein. And I had him as Frankenstein throughout my entire list. Until, until I thought about Frankenstein being kind of a sensitive character. There is an empathy when you look into Frankenstein's eyes. Or just the way that he portrays himself as a creature in the world. There's this deep apathetic piece of him that I don't connect with when I look at Michael Roker. Michael Roker is all power, but I need someone with a certain softness. And then that's when I thought about John Lithgow. Now I know he's kind of old at this point, but when this guy wants to be terrifying, he can be terrifying. And he has such a sweetness in his eyes that if I was to put him in the character role of Frankenstein, I think it would be amazing, and I think emotionally, I would get a lot out of that experience. Now guys, that's gonna be it for this video. I have some reviews planned coming up, but I definitely wanted to get something out for you guys on this wonderful Friday the 13th. And before I let you go, I just wanna point you in the direction to the description below, where there was an awesome article written about me and my channel on mutantfam.com by the amazing Lily Spellman. She was so professional and so cool and really spoke about the channel in a way that made me proud. So I would love it if you guys took the time, click that link, read that article, maybe give it a heart, and check out the rest of what's going on on the Mutant Fan page, as well as checking out all of the other articles on Lily Spellman's blog. Just awesome stuff with Channel of the Living Dead, my good pal over at Survivor's Guild, it just keeps on coming and coming when it comes to MutantFam.com. So definitely go over there, check it out. It's a great place to get new content for horror. And it would make me really happy to see you guys start meshing in with those guys. I'm going to end this video for now. Peace, video creeps.